In chapter 8, we're going to look at transformational leadership. This is a really popular theory of leadership, and it focuses on how good leadership can transform the follower. Now, this transformational leadership approach, first of all, let's note that it's a process. It assumes that the leader's interactions can transform the followers. The, the idea that, that the leader changes the followers in such a way that the group's goals are uh, accomplished. It has a big emphasis on influence, as all leadership theories should. It assumes that a leader uh, can transform followers to accomplish what they wouldn't do otherwise. It's the idea of making people better to accomplish the, the goals that are uh, sought after. Some of the core elements that are in transformational leadership are come from its assumptions that followers' emotions, values, ethics, standards, and long-term goals can be changed. So we're really talking about changes in the, uh, uh, the follower. We're especially talking about emotions because that's viewed kind of like as the beginning of the change, that, the, that uh, uh, this transformational leader will motivate and people get people enthused and get them excited about changing goals so that they, they work and uh, uh, accomplish those goals. And it also includes the idea that it will change the follower's values, their ethical uh, principles, their standards for what good work is, and the long-term goals rather than just thinking about themselves Maybe they'll be more concerned about the well-being of the organization or the mission of the organization. So this is one of the few uh, uh, leadership theories where emotions play a real uh, strong, specific role. Um, transformational leadership is also based a good degree on this uh, this measure called the multi-factor uh, leadership questionnaire, the MLQ. And what it does is it measures four different leadership behaviors, the four I's that we're going to see. And because it's kind of a, an easy to administer uh, a measure, there have been tons of studies that have been done using the MLQ. Now, to understand transformational leadership, it's good to contrast it to transactional leadership. Or at least that's what the, le the literature on transformational leadership always does. On one hand, we have transactional. On the other hand, we have transformational. Now, transactional leadership focuses on the exchanges that occur between leaders and the followers and kind of the transactions. If you do this, then I'll do this. A politic politician might say, there'll be no new taxes if uh, uh, I'm elected. And then voters might respond by saying, okay, we'll vote for you. Um, someone who's uh, into uh, uh, a car a car dealer. Um, the, the owner might say, if you sell more cars, you'll get a bonus. And the workers will say, oh, I will try to get that bonus. And so it's the idea of doing more work for more pay. Uh, do, a professor says, if you do a, these assignments and you meet these standards and you do them really well, you'll get a good grade. Um, uh, a, a manager might say, if you surpass your goals, you'll get a promotion and you'll get a higher position and increased pay. And so transactional uh, exchanges, transactional uh, uh, interaction, are the type of exchanges that can be observed in all organizations. You come to work for me, I'll pay, for, pay you. You'll get a salary. These are the things that we uh, normally expect in, uh, um, in organizations. Now, in contrast to transactional leadership, which sometimes in the transformational leadership is viewed as a bad thing, is transformational leadership. And this is a process of engaging with others to create a connection that increases motivation and morality. It changes their values in both the leader and the follower. Both grow to become someone better, committed to the cause. And to do this, the leader needs to be attentive to the needs and the motives and the values and the concerns of followers and tries to work with the followers to help each one reach their fullest potential. An example of someone who's a transformational leader, or who was, was Abraham Lincoln, the president during the uh, Civil War, the president of the North. 
Uh, he raised the hopes and the demands of millions of people to rally behind this idea that all people were created equal and should have equal rights. He motivated to get them to give themselves, get to give their all to end slavery. And he's gone down as a, a, a national hero in America. So transactional leadership is kind of like normal things that you would expect, whereas transformational leadership is this almost like superhero leadership that transforms people because uh, of the, the values and the, and the concern and the goodness associated with the leader and the cause. Now, we also have to pay attention to what is often classified as pseudo-transformational leader. And that's where the leader gets everybody aroused up emotionally and motivated and all fighting for the same cause, but it focuses on the leader's own interests rather than what's good for his or her followers. So the leaders end up being transforming in a negative way, self-consumed, exploitive, power-oriented, with warped moral values. And examples like that could be like Adolf Hitler or Saddam Hussein, who roused up people's emotions, but used them to, uh, to do evil rather than to do uh, good. So they're classified as pseudo-transformational. So what are these things that lead to transformational leadership? Well, the theory says that there are four I's. These are kind of awkward phrases that all start with the letter I, but you can kind of remember them that way. The first is idealized influence. That's the idea of being a strong role model the, with high standards of moral and ethical conduct, kind of like being that, that superhero who everybody respects and wants to emulate because they're uh, so good. Secondly, there's inspirational motivation where the leader has high expectations and communicates the uh, uh, importance of this and gets people aroused to want to achieve these high goals. It inspires these followers to uh, uh, being committed to a, to a shared vision of what the organization or what the world should be like. The third I is intellectual stimulation. And that means stimulating followers to be creative and innovative, developing innovative ways of dealing with organizational issues, perhaps themselves coming up with new ideas that nobody's ever come around with and motivating those around them to come up with new ideas also. And then fourth is individualized consideration. And that means caring for the people that they supervise listening carefully to the needs of followers, maybe not as individuals, but as uh, a country as a whole, and then to help followers grow through the perfect personal challenges and the difficulties that they face as they try to accomplish the goal and the vision that the leader has, has convinced them is so valuable. So those are the four I's, and the theory is is that if a leader is doing these four things, then they will transform the follower to a work in such a way that they accomplish the vision and to accomplish it in a way that they wouldn't be able to without these four eyes. Now what are the the strengths and the weaknesses of the these uh, uh, this transformational leadership theory? First of all, it's intuitive of people, intuitively appealing. People are attracted to transformational leadership because it makes sense to them. Yeah, we want somebody that's awesome to be our leader. Yeah, we want to have a, a superhero. We want uh, someone that will, will change us and make us better people. So people really like the, uh, the idea of that type of leadership, and they especially like thinking that, whoa, yeah, I want to be the, the, the transformational leader. I want to uh, be the superhero. Um, so it's, it's really attractive to people. A uh, second strength is that it emphasizes followers. It emphasizes the followers' emotions, the needs, their values, and their morals. It looks at a lot of the things that are happening inside of followers. It also has some demonstrated effectiveness. Evidence supports that transformational leadership, at least the four I's, are an effective form of leadership. Um, the, the four I's and contingent reward really do impact motivation, performance, satisfaction. Uh, what, 
excuse me, I didn't explain what con uh, contingent rewards are. Contingent rewards are considered a part of transactional leadership, where you reward people if you uh, uh, if they do something uh, good. So, along with the four eyes that we just looked at, con contingent rewards really do impact uh, people's motivation, their performance, and their satisfaction with uh, organizations. But there are some criticisms of transformational leadership. First of all, it lacks conceptual and measurement clarity. When we talk about the four eyes and we try to measure them, we see that they overlap an awful lot. If you think somebody is um, pays uh, individualized attention to you and cares about you, you're going to find them inspiring and, and that they uh, 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 that they uh, uh, care for you. You'll also probably mark on the survey that you find them intellectually stimulating. Um, the the four eyes don't really seem to at least in the MLQ, don't seem, really seem to measure very distinct uh, characteristics. Um, transactional and transformational leadership in real life actually overlap. Someone that's considered a good leader will be transactional. If you get hired by somebody and you think they're an awesome leader, they're actually going to pay you the way that you think that you should be paid, or maybe they'll even pay you more. Uh, people really do expect uh, good leaders to be uh, transactional and to do what they say that they're going to do. They don't just expect leaders to transform them, especially in organizational s settings. Another problem with uh, uh, transformational leadership, it is essentially ignores task-oriented behavior that's associated with good leadership, such as planning, defining roles, defining objectives, problem solving, uh, these are the things that make or break organizations. And if they can have leaders that, that do these things well, they're much more likely to have, be successful rather than just having a leader that can motivate and challenge people. And then the validity of the MLQ is, is weak. The question is, does the MLQ simply measure how much a follower likes a leader? If they like somebody, are you going to say they're not intellectually challenging? Um, and then also, do leaders with high MLQ scores, who score high in the four eyes, do they actually transform their followers? Maybe they're just nice people. Maybe uh, uh, they, they know how to get things uh, done and motivate people, but does that really mean that they've transformed their uh, followers? Another issue with transformational leadership is that it treats leadership more as a set of personality traits, this charismatic leader who, who know has these habitual actions to, to motivate people. It, look, it treats these characteristics as traits and abilities rather than a behavior that can be taught. It's not clear how you can train somebody to be a transformational uh, leadership. And it has the potential to be abused. Unless there are absolute moral standards that everybody that believes in the difference between transformational and pseudo-transformational leadership is blurred. All you have to do is think of some political leader. Some political leaders by one group are going to be, oh yeah, he's an awesome transformational uh, leader. Others are going to say, oh, that's pseudo-transformational leadership. He's ap uh, actually horrible. And that's because the two groups don't have the same values. And if there's one group that really values certain things, they're going to see someone as a transformational leader, and the others are not going to see him or her as a transformational leader. They'll see them as, as evil. So uh, that's a, a, a weakness of uh, transformational leadership as well. And I'd like to end with a, a short biblical uh, reflection. This idea of a transformed life, so the idea that, that people can make a transformation in us is really an appealing idea. We want leaders that can uh, um, uh, transform us and make us better. And something really interesting is that over the centuries, there have been hundreds, thousands, even millions of people that have found that type of leader in Jesus Christ. In fact, that's the main attractiveness of Bible-based Christianity, is that the Bible says that Jesus died for us so that we could have a personal relationship with God. Jesus died 
to transform us, to forgive us of our sins, to fill our lives with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. And there's a verse in the Bible that says that if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. They've been transformed. The old has passed away. The new has come. That's what I've experienced in my life with Jesus Christ, and that's what millions of other people have experienced also. He's the absolute model of transformational leadership.